I think as a user, uh, one of the, the, the first thing that comes to mind to me is that indeed technology is now more complex, but you shouldn't be intimidated by it. I think technology on its own does not create uh, you know, economic booms, it does not create relationships, it's the people that use it and, 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 and the usage behind it. So uh, technology in isolation, if it were there by itself and no one used it, it would have no impact. So the real impact comes on how we use it. The, the speed of development is probably the most interesting thing about it. When you look at previous things from steam engine, the automobile, the spread uh, the speed of the spread of this technology, uh, the diffusion of it is, is, the, is probably the most outstanding part of where we are now. We're probably in the middle of a cycle uh, of, of just learning how to, to, to adapt in the applications of the technology, but it's the speed at which it's developing and, and, and being dispersed across the globe that really makes it complex. Yeah, I think that's still to be decided um, because of the, the, again, the speed and the way the applications are spreading. But when you look at it on a, in an education level, for example, um, the, certainly the science and math fields are the ones that are benefiting most from it. And, and, and it's creating interest in the students uh, in those fields, which is, uh, which is going to be a global shortage in, in time to come. Um, when you look at it in the health uh, healthcare perspective, obviously patients uh, are benefiting enormously. It's, it's reducing the backlogs, uh, the time for scheduling, the processing of materials. But doctors, on the other hand, feel that it's interfering with the doctor-patient relationship, that it, uh, some people come in and, and are self-diagnosing. There's cyberchondriacs. Uh, and those, it's, it's those sorts of uh, individuals uh, on the individual uses and application where you're finding winners and losers. I think on a broad scale, uh, it, it, comes to, uh, it comes to economies, uh, wealth, uh, and, and how advanced economies are. Uh, advanced nations are, are benefiting more right now because they have greater use and greater application than developing nations, but that's starting to level. Right, I don't think it's so much as a, there's a winner and a loser, but it's that the developing countries are gaining and gaining more rapidly on the advanced countries. In some ways, the, the applications and use of and, and the diffusion of technology in advanced economies may have peaked. And there's a, still a large catch-up to be done in the developing world. And that's starting to happen, and that's happening rapidly. So there isn't really a winner or loser, because the people that are trailing behind are going to catch up eventually. It's a tool, and it's a tool that I can use to benefit me and benefit society. It's not the, the technology that's forcing you to do something, but it's at your command, and, and it, requires, it requires some application, some, um, some commitment to, to learning how to use it, but once, once that time is put in, the benefits are just exponential. I think for a user, it's experiential. I mean, you have to use the technology in order to master it. And that requires fooling around with all the applications on your iPhone or your Droid, uh, rather than just staying there with a little uh, flip phone that doesn't have the, the sort of web type applications. Uh, it's, it's a gradual immersion, but you have to be, I think you pretty much have to be hands on. You can read all you want about it, but until you actually use it and feel comfortable with it, then only then will you master it. I think that that's, that's very difficult. I mean, this book and the research behind this book really was not pointed at what is the next big thing. I mean, we're really looking more at the impact on economies and societies of the existing technology and what will be required maybe from a government angle uh, to create the environment to, to maximize the benefits of the technology that we have now. Uh, the only thing you can really say about the future is that it's going to be a little more complex and it's going to be wa more widely dispersed and more people around the globe are going to be using these technologies and that's um, you know that's a for certain. Well I think gov governments are critical in how uh, in, in creating the right environment to maximize the benefits of new technology. Um, they you know they, again trying to create an obstacle or putting obstacles in front of its use uh, may have worked temporarily. I mean we look at, 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 at previous countries, uh, I take the Soviet Union for example, where there was absolutely no information flow and then once those gates opened, it, it spun out of control very quickly. So uh, it needs to be, the government's role is really being able to create the environment to make a market competitive and to, and to allow for its maximum benefits. Trying to obstruct it is a, is a, losing, uh, is, is a losing strategy. Well, I know the project began in uh, 2008 with funding from the Telefonica Foundation uh, and it involved a, a group of uh, researchers here at the conference board and around the globe uh, looking at uh, I guess anywhere at 11, uh, 12 different aspects of the impact of technology from the economy to, the, to, to social relationships uh, to education to health 
uh, and to and implications for government policy. Uh, on internally, um, it, the resources were uh, were were intensive. Um, we had an editing team and a production team uh, working with uh, to create some of the graphic materials. Uh, but all in all, um, it was time well spent.